Hi, this is Greg Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's get started with the next video. Today we're going to talk about how we name alkanes. If you recall from our last video, we saw that you could have essentially an infinite possible number of combinations of how you could arrange carbon atoms. Whether you reach infinity or not, you could have trillions and trillions of different molecules, and each one of those would have to have a very unique name. So if we had just a common name for each one of those, it wouldn't be possible to come up with a way to name them all. So we have to have a systematic method that would allow us to name a molecule where we could follow the rules every time and come up with a unique name depending on every single different structure. Uh, and fortunately, that's possible. There's an organization called the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, which comes up with formal rules on how we do things in chemistry and particularly about how we name things. So we refer to this as the IUPAC nomenclature system for organic molecules. In this case we're going to talk about alkanes. Uh, remember from the previous video we talked about the various uh, alkanes in linear combinations of chains from one carbon up to ten carbons. That's listed here on this slide. Methane has one carbon, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, and decane. Those first ten you should definitely try to remember and keep those names in your mind. Longer chains have an, a more systematic names for those, so if you go to 11 carbons it's undecane, 12 carbons is dodecane, and so on. Uh, those larger numbers of carbon chains we tend to not have to deal with that often, so you, I don't think you need to worry too much about trying to remember those names, but certainly you should know the names of the first 10 linear alkanes. So every IUPAC named molecule has essentially four different parts. The main part of this is the parent. That is the main chain of carbons, or the longest chain of carbons that we can identify in the molecule. So the parent is going to be the main name. For example, pentane. If five carbon chain that's linear is the longest part of the molecule, the parent would be pentane. We also have substituents which can be branched off of them and that would be uh, where we would put in the prefix and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Then we have um, other th things that could be involved in the name of a molecule. This becomes more important when we talk about functional groups later, but locations for various groups and suffixes which can indicate some different functional groups. We will see that functional group naming later depends on the type of functional group. Sometimes it's in a suffix and sometimes that functional group is identified in the prefix. Okay, so when we have branched alkanes, the first step is to find the longest continuous chain of carbons in that molecule, keeping in mind that that might not be just the linear chain from left to right. It could be longer going off. It depends on how you draw it on the paper. It could be drawn in many different ways. If there is more than one possibility for the longest chain, depending on which branch you choose to count from, choose the chain that is the most branched. That is, we want the longest chain or the parent of the molecule to be the one that has the most branches off of it. This avoids the formation of very complex branching or substituents off of that chain. This is the parent chain. So this is what we would use as the parent name for the molecule. Then we need to see what all groups are attached to that parent chain that are branched off of the parent chain. Uh, in this case we're talking about alkanes, so this is where our alkyl groups come into play when we have, say, uh, one carbon hanging off or branching off of a parent chain. That would be a methyl group. Notice we changed the A-N-E ending of methane to a Y-L ending of a methyl group on a larger molecule. And then what we need to do, once we have identified what all the different branches or substituents are on that parent chain, we need to provide the location for them. So we need to number the chain beginning at one end of that longest chain, and we usually start at the end nearest a substituent. So if your branching of an alkane chain occurs on a, from one direction on the second carbon and from the other direction on a third carbon, you would choose to number from the side that it's closest to the end. So you would number from the side where it's branched off the second carbon. If there are equal distances between branching, that is if you look at both ends of the longest chain and there's a branch at the same position from either end, then you go to the next branch from each of those and see which one is the closest and that's how you make your determination. 
And finally, what we need to do is write the name for the molecule. We start with writing the parent name, and then we write the prefixes with comma. So we have to give the number and location of the substituent, the substituent name, and we need to tell how many of those different kinds of substituents there are. And I'll explain this in the example in a moment. If there are more than one substituent on the same carbon, they would each have the same number because we've numbered the longest chain according to the direction that we had the most branching from. If there's more than one substituent with the same name, that is if you have a methyl group on one position and another methyl group in another position, we would use the terms di or tri or tetra referring to two or three or four of those methyl groups. So it would be like dimethyl. Then we arrange the prefixes or all the different substituents in alphabetical order according to the substituent name. That does not include the di, tri, tetra, but includes the main substituent name. If we're using common names like an isopropyl group or an isobutyl group, then we would use the iso, the I of the iso, in the alphabetizing order of those names. So let's take a look at those constitutional isomers of hexane that we had seen before. As you know, the linear chain here on the left uh, has a name of hexane according to the IUPAC rules. This is a six carbon chain hexane. Uh, once we form different constitutional isomers of C6H14, you see that the longest chain in any direction is no longer 6. This has 6 carbons, so it's hexane. However, if we look at this molecule down on the bottom left, um, the longest continuous chain that we can find is a 5 carbon chain. So this 5 carbon chain, whether I number it from here or I could number it from here, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's a five carbon chain and I've numbered it closest to the, the position of a branch. Uh, so numbering it from left to right, we have a uh, five carbon chain. So the parent name here is pentane. That's the parent molecule. And we have one substituent hanging off of that pentane, which is a methyl group. One carbon would be methane, and since it's a substituent, it's a methyl and it's in the two position along the chain. So the name for this molecule would be 2-methylpentane. Methylpentane is all one word. Now take a look at the molecule in the middle. What is the longest chain that we can identify? If I start from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, those are four carbon chains no matter which direction I work from. Uh, but that's not the longest chain. The longest chain is actually here, one, two, three, four, five. It's also a pentane as a parent chain. And there's one substituent, it's also a methyl group. So methyl is um, on the number three carbon of the chain, so this would be three methyl pentane. So notice the difference in these two names methylpentane is identical because it's a five carbon chain with a methyl group hanging off of it but what distinguishes these two molecules is the position number for the methyl group and where it's attached. So that identifies these molecules as being different molecules. We can look at the other example on the upper right. This is a uh, a molecule which is even more branched so we have uh, the longest chain is four carbons long. So what is the parent name for a four carbon chain alkane? That would be butane. Butane. And on this molecule we have two substituents branching off. We have a methyl group here and another methyl group that happens to be attached to the same carbon. So since there are two methyl groups as substituents on the parent chain, this is actually what we would refer to as a dimethyl. Dimethyl, meaning two methyl groups. Okay, and then we have to give the numbers for them, and we need to give a number for each one of them. So the actual name for this would be 2 comma 2, because they're both on the same number 2 carbon of the chain, uh, and there are two methyl groups, so dimethyl, 2, 2, dimethyl, butane. That's the name for that molecule. And then the last constitutional isomer down here, again we have the longest chain is butane. 
exactly the same as above. We have a substituent on the two carbon and a substituent on the three carbon. This is a methyl group and this is a methyl group. Again, we have two different methyl groups, so we have to use the prefix dimethyl to refer to two methyl groups. Now they're not on the same carbon in this particular example, so we do have to put the numbers for that as well. So the whole name for this molecule is 2,3 dimethyl, referring to one of the methyl groups being on the number two carbon of the chain and the second methyl group being on the number three carbon of the chain. So the thing that distinguishes this name for the isomer from the previous one is, again, just the positions of the methyl groups are different. But it is a, each a unique name that identifies that unique isomer for C6H14. Okay, let's take a look at an example that's a little bit more complex. Here's a larger molecule which has longer chains than a pentane or a hexane or a butane uh, and has more substituents. It's more branched. So we could look for the longest chain in this molecule. Uh, for example, we could start here on the left and start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a chain length of seven, okay? Uh, we could number this a little bit differently, so we could again start from the left and draw seven, but we could draw down here in this direction. Is that the longest chain? Well, that's a seven carbon chain as well. Is that the longest chain in the molecule? Well, let's take a look at this. Uh, if we take a look at this way around the chain, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a longer chain. Uh, and it's identical and equally long if we number it down in this direction. This would be seven and eight. So actually eight, whether we uh, do it this way or this way, eight is the longest chain in this molecule. So let's take a look at this molecule again. We've identified the longest chain and I'll just draw it here and identify it and show it in blue. Okay, so now that we've found our longest chain, what we need to do is identify the substituents on that chain. So if you take a look at this, we have three different substituents or branches off of the main chain. We have two methyl groups and then one two carbon group which we call an ethyl group. Okay, we've identified the, the names of those substituents, the alkyl groups, and we now need to number the chain according to the rules that we have closest to the nearest substituent. So if we start numbering from the top left, we have a uh, carbon one here, carbon two here, and carbon three here. Okay, now let's take a look at numbering from the other end. Our first branch from the left is on the third carbon. And if we look at the other direction, our first branch would be also on the third carbon. So there's no difference between those two substituents. So we go to the next position. So if, we, if, we're, if we're going this direction, we see that the number four carbon in that direction has no branch, whereas the number four carbon in this direction has a branch and a substituent hanging off of it. So it is this direction that we have to number the molecule from. So here are the numbers for the molecule and then the substituents with their corresponding numbers that I've written here. Uh, and overall this gives the lowest numbers on our prefix for the substituents and that's another way to check your name is correct that you've numbered from the right direction if the numbers overall add up to a lower number. So here I have numbered the longest chain in the direction that we need to from the top left to the bottom right. It's an eight carbon chain, so the parent of this molecule is octane. I've identified the names for the substituents. There are two different methyl groups and one ethyl group. And the numbers for the carbons that they're attached to or branched off of are also listed by those names. So what is the complete name for this molecule? Okay, so again, octane is the parent of the molecule, the parent name. And then the prefix is made up of the three substituents, one ethyl group, and it's alphabetized by the E, and two methyl groups, dimethyl, alphabetized by the M. And in addition, we have to give the locations for those. So the ethyl group is attached to the number six carbon, and the two methyl groups are on carbons three and carbons four. Thus, we have the three, four dimethyl octane. So six ethyl, three, four dimethyl octane is the name for that molecule. If you recall from our previous video, we talked about the fact that 
molecules can have constitutional isomers and some of those smaller uh, numbers of carbon molecules that we have in alkanes uh, we have some common names for. So for example butane. This is normal butane and if we have the constitutional isomer like this, this we often refer to as isobutane. Isobutane. The IUPAC name for this would be what? The longest chain is three, so it's actually a propane uh, with a methyl group on the number two carbon. So this would be two methyl propane. Okay, two methyl propane. So this is a common name, isobutane, which is not uh, a name based on IUPAC rules. Occasionally, there are a few common substituents when we are talking about alkyl groups on a larger chain that IUPAC does accept as being used in addition to the IUPAC rules. And particularly for some of the small branch that are a little bit more complicated molecules, uh, we can use some common names. So for example, let me just take a seven carbon chain. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is a heptane molecule. Heptane, seven carbon linear alkane. And let me put a substitute on here which looks like this, okay? Branched. The parent chain here I'm gonna highlight in green. Okay, this is the parent chain. And then branching off of that on the four position is a molecule uh, which is a little bit more complex. That happens to be a three carbon group. One, two, three. So this is three carbon group. So this is actually a propyl group. A propyl group, but it's not attached on the one carbon. A propyl would actually be attached at this position to the chain. But in this one, it's attached to the main chain on the two position. So there's a common name for this. We often call this isopropyl as a substituent, isopropyl. So this molecule could be called uh, four isopropyl heptane as the name for this molecule. So you should be aware of some of the common names and isopropyl is one of them where you have a propyl group attached on a substituent from the central carbon that's isopropyl. Okay you can have a normal butyl where it's attached at the end of a butyl. Okay but if it's attached at the next carbon so we have four carbons and it's attached here we often refer to this as a secondary butyl because it's attached to the secondary carbon. And if it's a branched isomer of the butyl, so if the butyl looks like this and it's attached to a larger chain there, uh, it's still a four carbon group. We would refer to this as a tertiary butyl because it's attached to a, a, a tertiary carbon. So those are the few common names that you should know for alkyl substituents when naming alkanes. Another thing we need to consider when naming alkanes is what do we do in the cases that we have ring systems, so cycloalkanes. How do we name them and how do we number them? Okay, let's take an example and I'll explain it. So let's say we have a molecule which looks like this. Okay, what is the longest chain? Well in this case when we have ring structures we look to see if the ring part of the molecule is a longer a longer number of carbons or more number of carbons than uh, the branch. So we, we only consider the ring and not the other part. So in this case that would be five carbons for that ring and the other substituent uh, the other group would be two carbons. Okay so this is the longest one so our parent for the molecule is going to be uh, the five carbon ring. So how do we name that? Well five carbon linear chain would be named pentane and in this case since it's a ring structure it's simply named as a cyclopentane. That is the parent name for the molecule. Now we have a substituent which has two carbons and this is an ethyl group. Okay, And in this case since 
if you put it in this part of the ring, it's no different than this position or this position or this position. Wherever you put it, it's the same molecule. So there's no need to provide a number when there's only one substituent on the ring. So we could call this simply ethyl cyclopentane as one long word, where ethyl is the substituent prefix and cyclopentane is the parent. Now, what happens if we have more than one substituent on the ring? I can draw that again. Here is our pentane. Let's say we have our ethyl group there, but now we have a methyl group in this position. Okay, there's two substituents. So now we have to make a decision. We can identify again the parent molecule as the cyclopentane. That's the parent of the molecule. Okay, but now we have two substituents. We have an ethyl group, okay, and then we have a methyl group. And since it's a ring compound, we need to just start numbering the number one carbon from one of those substituents. And then which direction around the ring you continue numbering depends on where the closest branch is. So in this case, we have ethyl and methyl. So we use the alphabetical order also for deciding which has the number one carbon. So we start the where the ethyl group is attached as number one on the ring. And then we go in the direction of the closest branch. So number two, three, four, five. That's how we number the ring for cyclopentane. So in this case then we have a substituent on one and a substituent on two. So the name for this molecule would be one ethyl two methyl cyclopentane.